Hello everybody. It's been a long time since I last posted a solution for a competitive programming task, but now that I'm done with exams and with most of the other things I had to do, now I can finally start posting solutions again, and hopefully I will also do that as often as possible. For today, I decided to present the solution for the problem C from the Code Forces Run 701, Division 2, a round I tested uh, before it took place, and also a round I found interesting. And this task was one of my favorites while testing the round, and that's why I decided to actually do a video on it. So let's go. For this problem, we call a pair of positive integers a, b to be special if the floor of a divided by b is equal to a mod b. And we are given in the statement the definitions for floor of a divided by b and for a mod b. And we are also given the integers x and y. And we need to find the number of special pairs a, b such that a is between 1 and x and b is between 1 and y. And uh, the numbers x and y are quite big, are like up to 10 to the 9. So we can't really just iterate over all the possible pairs and check out the property for each of them. That's way too slow. And we need to think of something smarter. Now, the thing about these problems, like when you see something like formula or math or stuff like that, is to try and find observations which uh, make the problem easier. And something I observed which works quite often these days is to try and think of the concepts which are presented in the problem statement. Like here we have some division, some reminder, and basically what I did during testing is thinking that some theorems and stuff I knew about uh, these things back from the middle school. Like I learned these things in five, fifth grade at math classes, so not quite uh, advanced math because after all it's just a deep to see. Now I'm going to present to you how I actually came up with the solution because in my opinion it's quite an interesting way and also a bit educational for those who are not really good at math. So let me move to the whiteboard. So we know that for a pair AB we need to ensure that A divided by B is going to have the same quotient and reminder. So we will call them both uh, R. R and reminder is going to be R as well. And from uh, the math classes, from the middle school, we know that A is equal to B times R plus R. And furthermore, we also know that B has to be bigger than R. This thing isn't that uh, particularly important now. But uh, this bound is very important, as you will see in the solution later on. Furthermore, we also know that A has to be smaller or equal to X, and B has to be smaller or equal to Y. So again, uh, something we also have to consider. So B has to be at most Y. This is also quite important. Now, since A has to be at most X, we can rewrite this as uh, something like this. So, a uh, instead of a, we are going to write something like x. So, x we can assume x to be equal to b times r plus r, and uh, like uh, x has to be uh, bigger or equal to b times r plus r because if b is smaller, then the value is going to be smaller as well. So it will work, like this value is going to be smaller, which is going to be smaller than x as well. Now, since we know this thing, we can literally write it as a simple equation by moving r to the left side and then moving this other r as well. So it's going to be uh, first things, first this thing. So x minus r is going to be at least equal to b times r. And after one more operation, like after moving r to the left side, x minus r divided by r is going to be uh, bigger or equal to b. So this is going to be another bound, because we can rewrite it as uh, b has to be 
uh, smaller or equal to x minus r divided by r. So we now found the uh, bounds for p. Now, we also need to find out how much do we actually need to iterate over r because it sounds quite logical to iterate over r because of this formula. So we can rewrite this as uh, a equal to uh, b plus 1 times r because we have this common number in both terms and we can use factorization like it's gonna be b times r plus 1 times r which is like b plus 1 times r and we also know that b is smaller is bigger than r so a is gonna be at least equal to r plus 2 times r and a is also at most x and x is at most 10 to the 9th So we know that this number is smaller than a, and we know that a is smaller than 10 to the 9th. So this one is also smaller than 10 to the 9th. And it's bigger than r raised to the squared. So we can now confidently say that r has to be at most square root of 10 to the 9th, which is around 30 something thousand. But because in the contest I didn't really bother to find the exact uh, lower bound because it was reasonably small enough, I went with a simple approximation which is 10 to the fifth. So what I did was iterating over all the reminders from uh, 0 to 10 to the fifth. Actually not 0 because uh, this would, won't work because we can't divide anything by 0. So I iterated over all the reminders from 1 to 10 to the 5th. So now I'm going to show the implementation. As you can see here, this implementation isn't very big. Like the only things I actually had to write were these few lines and this function. And after reading the input, as I said, I iterated over all the reminders from 1 to 10 to the 5th. I found the... Uh, upper bound for the uh, x, for b actually. In my solution, uh, instead of naming x and y like they were called in the statement, I named them I named them a and b. So a and b are like x and y from the original statement and the other values are like a and b. So I found the uh, upper value of upper bound of b and now I've added the, the value of this function, which is going to tell me the number of numbers in the range from the reminder plus 1 and the minimum between y and this maximum value, which is basically whether this interval is actually a correct one or a wrong one. An interval is correct when the first number is actually smaller or equal to the second one. Otherwise, we will just return a 0. And this is actually all the solution. Like, uh, this is the case of a problem where you spend uh, like quite a bit of time thinking at the observations, the ideas, and uh, the parts behind the solution. And then when you end up implementing it, you, re you realize that the implementation isn't that long. And it's quite easy to actually get this problem done from the first try if you're doing the things right. And when it comes to math tasks, it's usually like if you mess up with the formulas or you forget that you can divide by zero or something like that, it's going to be bad. But otherwise, it's going to be fine most of the times. If you liked watching this video, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and please share the video with uh, your competitive programming friends and also in all the places you are active in because these days, uh, I haven't posted a lot of videos, so it's going to be a bit harder to get again in reach of as many contestants as possible until I will start posting more often. So I really need your support for this thing. Until the next time, stay safe, stay healthy, good luck and goodbye.